everyone, welcome to Dixie Storytime World. Are you ready to listen to Wanted, Prince Charming? Chapter 1 Not so long ago, there was a princess named Reverie. All she ever did was read fairy tales and daydream of being rescued by a knight in shining armour from the clutches of an evil dragon. Ah, she would sigh, who will be my Prince Charming? Princess Reverie was fed up with simply daydreaming. Why couldn't she be like a real fairy tale princess? Sleeping Beauty, for instance. I'm beautiful, Princess Reverie said to herself. All I need to do is sleep for a hundred years. Then surely my Prince Charming will come along. She sighed again and tucked herself into bed. Just then, the chambermaid barged into the princess's bedroom. She plugged in the vacuum cleaner and started cleaning. Broom, broom, broom. Then the phone started to ring. Ring, 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 ring. Almost at the same time, the royal band began to play outside in the courtyard. Rum, a boom, bang, crash. A large picture clattered to the floor. Crash. Ah! screamed Princess Reverie her hands over her ears. It's impossible to sleep for one minute, let alone a hundred years. She slipped out of bed and stomped out of the room. Chapter 2 Later that day, Princess Reverie heard that a prince was holding a ball at his palace that very evening. I know, she cried. I'll be Cinderella. She began to get ready at once. An hour before midnight, Princess Reverie arrived at the ball. She looked dazzling in her purple gown and glass slippers. Everyone stopped what they were doing and stared at her, including the prince. Please allow me a dance, he invited. Of course, smiled Princess Reverie. Oh, how they danced. They danced nonstop. Their feet hardly touched the floor as they whirled and twirled to the music. Before long, the clock struck midnight. Oh, I must go now said Princess Reverie all of a sudden, and she rushed off. Of course, she made sure to leave behind one of her glass slippers. Wait, the prince called after her. You forgot something. As he said it, he kicked the glass slipper. It went sliding across the smooth floor and crash. It hit a wall and broke into pieces. Oops, giggled the prince, thinking it was funny. Princess Reverie was not amused. What kind of prince are you? She yelled, furious. Certainly not charming. And she stormed off, hobbling a little. Chapter 3 The next morning, Princess Reverie was reading the newspaper when she saw an ad. It said, Clean and needed by seven dwarves living in a cottage in the heart of the woods. If interested, call this number. Perfect! Wheel Princess Reverie, I'll be Snow White. She applied for the job and got it. The seven dwarves didn't turn out to be like Princess Reverie had imagined. They were dirty, lazy and rude. All they did was sit around watching football on TV and playing computer games. They stuffed themselves with pizza and kebabs and guzzled fizzy drinks. They argued and fought and broke the furniture. Princess Reverie got fed up with them all. Why don't you go to work? She shouted. You know, in the mines, like you're supposed to, to dig for diamonds. No, they replied. We've got everything we need here. It was all hopeless, thought Princess Reverie. Even when someone knocked at the door, it wasn't an ugly old hag with a poisonous apple. It was just a delivery boy with more pizza, kebabs and fizzy pop. No prince charming around here, she muttered, so she left. Chapter 4 A few days later, while brushing her hair, Princess Reverie had an idea. How about Rapunzel? she thought. Hmm, my hair's not long enough. So she made herself a wig, the longest one in the world. Then she rented a tall tower in the middle of the countryside. Once there, she locked herself in and threw the key out of the top window. Before long, she spotted a handsome young man driving past in a sports car. 
Here comes my Prince Charming, smiled Princess Reverie. She let a long wig drop over the windowsill until it touched the ground below. Help! Help! She began to shout. I'm stuck up here. Please help me. The young man saw and heard her. He stopped the car at once. Hang on, he shouted back. He whipped out his cell phone and quickly dialed a number. A few minutes later, two fire engines arrived, sirens blaring and red lights flashing. Let go of me, shrieked Princess Reverie as she was being rescued. This is not what is supposed to happen. Let go. But the firefighters were not putting up with any nonsense, even when Princess Reverie lashed at them with her stupidly long wig. Chapter 5 one sunny day, Princess Reverie was sitting in the palace gardens, daydreaming once more. Ah, she sighed, who will be my Prince Charming? Suddenly she heard, oink, oink, oink. A large purple pig with orange spots appeared out of nowhere. What a strange pig you are, exclaimed Princess Reverie, but you're so cute. And she planted a kiss on the pig's nose. All of a sudden, piff, puff, poof. Princess Reverie turned into a purple pig with orange spots too. At last, cried the other pig. I've been waiting for this to happen. What do you mean? asked Princess Reverie puzzled. I was once a prince, explained the other pig, but a stupid witch turned me into a pig. Of course, she meant a frog, but she got the spell wrong. I see, nodded Princess Reverie, but aren't you supposed to turn into a prince again when a princess kisses you? I wish, replied the other pig, that only happens when the witch gets the spell right. Great, sighed Princess Reverie. Now what do we do? We'll get married, of course, replied the prince pig, and we'll live happily ever after. Oh, well, shrugged Princess Reverie. I don't see why not. Lovely, cried the other pig, delighted. By the way, he said as they trotted along together. My name is Prince Charming. The end.